going to do another example of the simplex method. This one with a linear programming problem with three variables, meaning we would not be able to solve it using the graphical method. For simplex, we do the same thing. Each constraint will get a slack variable added in to make it an equal sign, and then the objective function will be rewritten. So I'm going to add a v to the first one so I can get equality. I'll add a u to the second one and a w to the third one. And then I'm going to rewrite my objective function bringing everything over to the left and writing the p last with a positive p. Okay, so now I can start my initial setup of the problem. All my variables get listed across the top. And then each constraint has its coefficients turned into a row. First thing is to decide a pivot element. So the pivot row, or excuse me, column will be the column with the most negative number. To decide between the rows, I'm going to take these numbers and divide them into these. So 10 into 120 gives 12, 2 into 6 gives 3, and 10 into 105 gives 10.5. The smallest of these is the 3, so this is my pivot row and my pivot element. Okay. Next, I'm going to divide this whole second row by 2 in order to get a 1 in that position. Still my pivot element, I want to get zeros above and below it. So for the first row, I'm going to do R1 minus 10 R2. For the third row, I'll do R3 minus 10 R3. And for the fourth row, I'll do R4 plus 4. Excuse me, that should have been an R2. R4 plus 4 R2. This becomes start again, but there are no negative numbers left on the bottom row, which means I'm actually done. Every column that has just a single one and zeros is going to give me a value of a variable. So y will equal 3, v will equal 90, w will equal 75, and p will equal 12. The other variables that don't have the unit column become zero. So x is zero, z is zero, and u is zero. Okay. 